Hi everybody, I have returned on the day of my birth. It's my birthday today! 6th of December, how nice. And I thought, why not share one of my birthday presents for you guys? Stupid hair. And this is it. I can show you right now. I hope you enjoy it. The Doctor's, the 12th Doctor's, so I've screwed over Universal Remote in extending mode. It is really awesome. As you can see, it is very big. You look very big on the box, but actually it's not. It's actually smaller than I recognise. And here, about two, with the word right there. Extending toward the touch screen, it's remote control, with a picture of the TARDIS there. On this side, and on the other side, Doctor Who. And on the back, it just says, all oh, its functions, if you want to read that, pause the video right now. Okay, all good? Good. And on the bottom, this is nothing special. Just that boring legal stuff right at the bottom right there. The one company that you can make this licensed. And the barcode, blah 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 blah. And all these funny features right there at the bottom. That's enough of the box, let's get to the actual thing itself. It's only turned on, so yeah. It's turned on right now and and when you turn it on for the first time after you put the batteries, which are not included, you want to enter this mode. Practice mode. Practice mode. It's the first mode the service screwdriver ever enters. And practice mode is just so you get as a, as a practice so you can get used to the controllers like so. No, Tap on the bottom. Double press. And when you press the button again, just switch the mode. Control mode. Just control Double mode. Bank C. I, this only on memory bank C is because my memory bank A and B are already occupied for some things. But all it does is control your TV, but you have to randomly program commands with a remote. This thing, so I just use this remote example. And there's no need anyone else up there. All you have to do is enter when you enter programming mode, which is like um, somehow like this, I think. Memory bank A. No. Memory bank B. Memory bank B. Memory bank C. Only has three, and if I hold down on the third click, entering programming mode. And it's Memory programming mode. C. And when you push, let's do enter command like push. push. And hold the remote there and press any button you want to be linked with. And as you hear, it looks at the command, and when you press the button again, it will enter Exit programming mode. mode. Control mode. Memory now, if I push, as you see here, it will make a sonic noise, and actually, it turned off my skybox. If I do it again, it turns the skybox on. You dash, oh, need to hold down the button for all that. You press the button again, and enter the new mode. Quiet control mode. It's the exact same thing, just push it forward, and make a clicking noise. Well, and when there's a program equipped, that's all it does. FX mode. And my favourite mode is FX mode, where all it does is play every single sort of noise. When you hold down the button, it will emit, then after a certain time, it will play the noise. What an astounding, astounding noise that is! Astounding! And when you hold down the press the button twice and hold it down on the second push, it will stop, and every time you make a gesture, it will make a new noise, like so. And the feature you've all been waiting for, as you read on the box, is this. You have to actually flick to extend it, like so. And what an amazing flickability that is! When you close it, you hold the four claws. If you don't flick it hard enough, it'll just slide open, and it won't lock into place. It's had a locking mechanism, and it'll keep doing that. If, but if you do do that, I would recommend pulling it a little bit, like so. So you hear a click, then it will lock into place, it does not rattle at all, and if you hold up something like that, it won't fall back down, because it is, as I said, locked into place. 
So to put it back to normal, as I already said, hold the floor close, push down as hard as you can until you hear a massive click. If you don't do that hard enough, you push it down, and if you don't lock it into place, it will just keep sliding like that. And when you hold it upside down, if you don't lock it into place properly, it will just automatically extend anyway. So you need to hold it and do good push to hear it like a proper click. And it won't fall down ever again because it's still locked into place. Now then, let's look at the detail on this beautiful thing. The tip, the emitted tip, as you can see, is a lovely green like the actual toy. It would have been lovely if they didn't have that little line right there to show where they stuck it together, but hey. I love it all the same. I love the dark green, but the milky white, the milky brighter green. That's my cat. And the four claws do have the little indent on the bottom right there, as you can see. Thank you. Thanks for the extending. It does have these four bits at the side right there, right there, right there. Just so the claws do separate when you lift it up. It's a very good feature. This is, I think, is aluminium right here with the lovely plate right there, and on the side here is lovely actual copper. So it, when you first time you hold it, it's cool to the touch. It's very nice, has little indents on the copper right there and right there and the copper ring right here where when you twist it which this way when you twist it you'll see these little screws on the other side those when you unscrew them you have to twist so it's screw right and pull not just but make sure it doesn't break it yet make sure you have to twist it so it doesn't break and then there's a battery compartment where you have to put both batteries down with a little nib on it both of them facing down, so it has power. Practice when you enter practice mode, the way you turn it off is you hold the button to start flashing and it makes that noise. That locking noise was actually me having a lock code on it. So if I try to turn it on again, Please enter unlock code. I have a lock code, which is very nice, which is... Okay. That noise there... What's the site unlocking? Alright, continue with the detail. This, the grip here, is made of a soft rubber with the little indents there. And on the other side is the is the power button. That's the button you have to press every now and then just to make it work. With another copper ring right there, which I like that little one. And then you have this little marble pillar, whatever it is. It's with just a little yellow, like in the actual show. And if I get it closer... Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there should be little black flakes on it, like in the actual show, because I can see them, but they're very small. And finally, the little copper bit at the bottom, which there's no button, you can't pull it off, like in the actual show. And it's a favorite thing. Going to accessories, we have this, which is the Sonic Screwdriver's actual transparent stand. The reason it's transparent is because they wanted to keep costs down on the actual car, on the actual price of it. And all you have to do is plug into it like that. It holds it, even when it's extended mode, you can still put it down on a flat base and it will not fall over. Which is very nice. It's a very lovely thing. And don't try it on the 11th one if you have that, it will not work. And finally, yeah, this, which is the blueprints for the actual thing. As you can see, they are very large blueprints with the sonic rays right there, we'll call them. And the vibrations that it will make when you extend it, blah blah blah. It tells you what all sections are, which I'm not going to get into. And on the back, it's just all the boring stuff which tells you what everything does. Right here. Your description on this side 